Have you ever had those thoughts that, hey, I should have really invested in whatever at that point in time? Especially when we look at Toronto real estate, a lot of people look back to, let's say, like 2008, early 2009 and say, damn, I really wish I would have bought a property during that moment in time. Now, I purchased my first property in that period. I'm not going to pretend I was a financial genius. I just happened to luck into the market at that point in time. I wasn't in real estate yet. Prices came down. It was perfect time for me to jump in. What if I were to tell you that perhaps right now in the city of Toronto, we are in one of those opportunities. This is episode 10 of the Under the Radar Real Estate Podcast with your host, Joshua Jean-Baptiste, broker with Sage Real Estate. And on today's show, we are unpacking the layers of the Toronto real estate market. We are looking at where the market is right now, what the market has done over the past 12 months, because it's been an absolute roller coaster of a year in Toronto real estate. And then we're going to look back to the most recent uncertain times in real estate, which was the uh, banking collapse of like 2007 to 2009, to see if we can kind of take some pointers and look back in history to see if it'll dictate what we can expect moving forward as the year turns over into 2024. All right, so let's jump right into it. Let's look at the numbers from just last month. So for November 2023, pricing was fairly flat when we look at month to month and year over year. Back in November of 2022, the benchmark price was a million sixty four one hundred. This year in November of 2023, we were at a million sixty four thousand eight hundred. So fairly flat. Numbers haven't really moved in the past year when we look at year over year. Now, when we look at sales numbers from last month, sales were down about 6% when we compared to 2022. And then new listings were up 16.5% when we look at the same period last year. So that's quite a big jump in listings with fewer sales. So a lot of you understand and it's very clear to understand from those numbers that we're very much still in a buyer's market. And that has been the trend for the past three months. And it's unlikely to change much moving forward, which we're going to get into in just one minute. Now, what we really wanted to cover in this podcast. So normally when we do our market updates, it's a short market update, 10 to 15 minutes. We wanted to expand on that and include our market update in the podcast because we wanted to go over the full year numbers. The full year of 2023 has been interesting to say the least. So I'm going to pull this up on the screen right now. So when we look at the year, uh, we look at November 2022 to now. So the numbers look fairly flat but a lot happened in between, as you can see right here. So we see that we started off the year pretty much around the same numbers from November. So January, we were at a million sixty-two five hundred. And to kind of put in context, what happened at the beginning of the year was that the Bank of Canada over the back half of 2022 was actually in a cycle where they were holding their rates steady uh, moving into the new year. And as we moved into the new year, actually some fixed rates on mortgages started to move downwards. So as you can clearly see, January through till about June, we saw pricing start to move upwards. And most of this was just due to the mortgage market, right? We saw rates as low as the low 4% range, whereas a few months prior, rates were firmly in the fives. We saw rates in the fours. I think there was even some mortgages that you could get in the high threes uh, at the beginning of this year. And that really affected buyer sentiment uh, of the first half of the year. And as we saw the market this year kind of peaked in June. Now, some of you watching this may be screaming seasonality, and that is true. I mean, the spring market typically is a stronger market pretty much nine times out of 10 in most years. 
Uh, that is true that the spring market is likely going to have elevated numbers over the rest of the year. However, in most spring markets, we don't see after the spring a $100,000 drop, uh, in this case, over 10% drop in pricing from the spring till the end of the year. That is very abnormal. And that was largely driven by the interest rate environment that we're currently in today, right? So midway through the year this year, the Bank of Canada, because inflation numbers weren't exactly where they wanted them to be, they went back into a rising rate environment and they kept bumping rates up. And as mortgage rates went up, average house pricing came down. So the reality of the housing market isn't necessarily the price point of a home, is how much you can afford on a month to month basis. That's the way housing works in North America. For better or worse, it's really the monthly payment and what people can stomach for their monthly payments. Now, that's a very simplistic view of the market. I mean, there's a lot of other factors that influence where we're at today. Uh, another um, factor that really influenced our market were all of the variable rate mortgages and a lot of people having to get out of the, those mortgages, i.e. sell their properties to get out of those scenarios where perhaps they took a variable rate mortgage uh, and their interest rates were below 2%. At one point this year, they might have been paying close to 8% and amortized their properties up to 60, 70 years. Unsustainable. People were just paying purely interest, and a lot of people still today are paying purely interest on their mortgages. They weren't able to hold on to their properties. They had to list them for sale. So as more and more inventory was also hitting the market, it was also putting downwards pressure on price. And that's how we saw the over 10% dip in pricing from June to now. So that was 2023 pretty much in a nutshell. Now I'm recording this podcast in mid-December and just this week, the US federal uh, government has just announced that they were likely going to be going into a rate cut cycle to begin the year. The Canadian bond market has already reacted to that and bond rates have dropped significantly uh, a lot of mortgage brokers that i follow online or some that i know personally have already started mentioning that there's like that we're likely going to see fixed rate mortgages drop starting i mean perhaps even by the end of this week and in, er, into early next week where we're going to start seeing perhaps mortgage rates in the high four percent range on a five-year fixed which is very welcome news for a lot of real estate buyers out there, first time buyers, uh, also very welcome news for people looking to renew their mortgages or perhaps people on variable rates, perhaps wanting to lock in. So some interest rate relief is on the horizon. Now, when we look at kind of, when we zoom out even further from our market, so we looked at kind of this year where we started the year and where we ended, it's also, Another, I mean, one number that I want everyone to keep in mind is if you look back to, so I'm going to pull up another graph here and let's look at the kind of the entire price cycle that we've seen from the pandemic to now. So I pulled up numbers from November, 2019 to where we are today in November, 2023, to really give you uh, a clear picture into kind of the mess that <laughs> that we kind of got ourselves into uh, at certain points over the last few years, right? So we saw in November of 2019, pricing at just over 800,000 and 833,000. And over the course of a couple of years, as interest rates started dropping and people found themselves with extra uh, disposable income, and a lot of people were, when they're sitting at home in a pandemic and not able to move around, they realized they needed more space. They wanted to upgrade the residences. We saw a lot of pressure on house prices. There wasn't a lot of listings. Um, inventory was extremely low. We saw pricing push up uh, in 
and pretty much hit a peak in March of 2022 of 1.25 million. Now that's the median price. If we look at the average price at that time, it was quite a bit higher. But again, we like to look at the benchmark price because it's a bit more of a smoothed out, ver uh, smooth out statistic that gets rid of a lot of the highs and lows. So the benchmark price was 1.25 million at the peak. And now we've come all the way back down to about a million 64. Now, why am I bringing this up? So if we looked at the numbers from November 2019 and the numbers of today, so while there has been some pain in the market in terms of where we're at price-wise, we're still quite a bit above where the numbers were in 2019. Um, you'll hear a lot of people talk about real estate numbers pre-pandemic. These are City of Toronto specific. This is in the GTA. City of Toronto specific, we've still actually held pricing quite a bit above that pre-pandemic level. Um, so what does that all mean? When we look at the current trends, so the month over month pricing has stayed fairly stable. Yes, we're gonna go into some rate cuts, but we're seeing sales levels kind of drop off and we've seen um, list, listing levels move upwards. Is that I don't think we're necessarily at the complete bottom of the market in terms of pricing overall. There still could be some volatility in price in the city of Toronto, especially if listing inventory continues to rise. So we're still very much in a buyer's market. It, it's really going to be interesting to see as we move into January and then February, which is typically the beginning of the spring market, to see if buyers are going to flock back to the market, if interest rates are going to come down to a level that allows them to buy. Now, before I get into where I think things are going to be headed in 2024, I think I want to just take us back a second and look at our last economic downturn that perhaps might give us some clarity into what to expect moving forward this year and in years beyond 2024. So I'm going to pull up another chart right here. This is going to be the chart podcast. I should, I should have titled it charts, charts, charts. Uh, so let's look at this next chart, which, uh, showed the economic kind of boom bust of the 2007 to 2009 cycle when it comes to real estate. So as you can see here on the screen, um, we saw a steady increase in price in 2007. Banking crisis hits in uh, the early part of 2008. I remember that time vividly. I was working for a certain multinational uh, sports company and my position within that company was no more. The company said they weren't going to let anyone go during the down cycle. Lo and behold, a couple months into it, things changed at the corporate level and they started eliminating jobs. So anyhow, uh, that company that has three stripes as its logo, uh, no longer employed your boy. And um, yeah, I remember there was a, it was a strange period in time. I just bought a condo uh, and I no longer had a job. Luckily I have a wife and she was still working and she was able to support us during that time. Uh, and it was around that time where I thought, of, hey, maybe I should get into real estate. Um, anyhow, I digress. We clearly saw in the early part of that year, kind of March, prices had peaked in 2008. Uh, the banking crisis hit, and then we saw a very steep decline in price. Uh, by December of 2008, pricing had bottomed out. But what was very interesting is that there was a very, very quick recovery. So by March, we saw prices start to move up. And then by September, we were well above the pricing from kind of midway through that cycle. So we saw a quick drop and then a quick recovery. Now, there was a lot of things influencing that recovery here in Toronto. I mean, when we look at our brothers and sisters and cousins and everyone down in the U.S., they didn't see that same kind of boom bust. It took them about a decade to kind of recover to the price point to the current price levels they're at right now. It took them a long time to recover out of their uh, out of their deep recession that they had in their country. In Canada and more specifically Toronto, I mean, it's been 
something that's been talked about for now decades. I mean, I've lived in Toronto since the early 2000s, and it's always been a case that Toronto has severely underbuilt housing, and that's been happening for decades. And back in that boom bust that we saw, we were still at a massive deficit in housing. Toronto was still on the way up. Toronto as a world city was still very young and there was still a lot of businesses opening up here, still a lot of people moving here. So a lot of economic activity happening in Toronto. So we saw a very quick recovery and we saw prices go right back up to above levels prior to that mini recession that we had in Canada. So why am I bringing this up? So we see that we saw the quick kind of, we saw the gradual increase, the decline, and then the quick recovery. When we look at the bands currently, um, we don't see that same chart. Now it's still early. I mean, perhaps this spring we could see that quick recovery, but where inventory levels are at right now, and where sales numbers are at right now, and just price point, because I mean, when we looked at the the numbers from uh, 2007 to 2009, the average price of a house was below $500,000. So there was a much larger pool of buyers that were able to get back into that market, myself included. Um, you were able to buy a two bedroom condo at the time for sub $300,000. Those days are gone. Pricing is quite a bit elevated. Now, I'm not here to be a Debbie Downer, but I don't necessarily see us having that quick recovery that we saw in 2008 because of where price levels are at right now and where things have been trending for the past few months. Which leads me into uh, some of the advanced statistics that we like to look, that I like to look at. I call them, I mean, they're under the radar statistics because we don't really hear a lot of people talk about them. Uh, the two statistics that I like to look at that kind of determine where the market's at and where it's headed is months of inventory and sales to new listings ratio. So they sound self-explanatory. I'll give you a quick explainer. Months of inventory is if there were no new listings to hit the market from this point going forward. It's the amount of months it would take to sell off that inventory. Sales to new listings ratio is the amount of sales there are to new listings that hit the market over a certain period of time. So for months of inventory, we are currently sitting at 2.7 months. Now a balanced market is about two and a half months. So we are 0.2 above where a balanced market is at. When we look at last year at this time, we were sitting at two months of inventory. So within two months, we could have sold up all of the inventory. Now, you could say 0.7 doesn't seem like a big difference. Well, it's a big difference when we combine the months of inventory with the other advanced stat, which is sales to new listings ratio. So right now we are sitting at about 45% sales to new listings ratio. So only about 45% of listings that are hitting the market, new listings that are hitting the market are selling within a given period of time. Now in hot points of the market, so back like in March of 2022, we saw sales to new listings ratio of like over 70%. So 70% of new listings that were hitting the market were selling almost immediately. We are not seeing that right now. So when we combine months of inventory that's already trending upwards and has been trending upwards for the past few months with the sales to new listings ratio that continues to drop, we are not necessarily looking like we're going to be in a market that's going to recover very quickly. I believe that as we go into 2024, we are likely going to see very similar sales and market activity at least for the first couple of months of the year. So some other factors that might influence the market going into 2024, uh, the number one thing are gonna be mortgage renewals. So 2019 through to 2022, we saw record levels of transactions in the Toronto real estate market. We were seeing hundreds of thousands of transactions year over year for three to four years straight. Now, Many of those people who purchased real estate over the course of those years were purchasing real estate with fixed rates. And fixed rates below, I mean, quite a bit below the current levels that we see today. So a lot of mortgages in the 
sub three and a half percent range. Now, as those mortgages come due, I mean, because in Canada, the most popular fixed rates are generally from three to five years, those people are gonna be renewing mortgages in a much different rate environment. Now, I've already mentioned that there are some headwinds saying that mortgage rates um, are likely, fixed rates are likely going to be moving down as we turn the page into 2024. So if we get into a, a space where fixed rates are in the fours, and let's say someone who purchased in 2019 or early 2020, um, if they have mortgage rates in perhaps the low threes, yeah, I mean, it's not great having to pay an additional one to one and a half percent of your mortgage, but it's not necessarily devastating, um, especially if you've, if you're still employed and you've paid down some of your principal over the last kind of three, four, five years, and you didn't take a big home equity loan out that you have to now include with that debt, it may not be so arduous to renew. Now, where it's really going to be painful for some is if some people had refinanced uh, during some of those low interest years or have large home equity lines, if you were paying a rate sub three in the twos, I mean, some people even have some fixed rates in the ones, in the high ones. Now you're moving into a space where you're gonna have to renew your mortgage in the 5% range. That's going to take a big chunk out of your monthly budget. And a lot of people may or may not be able to carry that debt moving forward in 2024. So it, when we look at those impending renewals, will that add a lot more inventory to the market? Are there going to be a lot of homeowners that just simply can't renew their mortgages or are going to be forced to list their properties for sale? We already see high listing inventory and inventory continues to trend upwards. Will it continue to move upwards or will people simply be able to renew their mortgages and move forward? Good news is that in Canada, for the most part, most people are very prudent. And I actually believe most Canadians who have mortgages and who own property are going to be able to deal with the elevated uh, lending rates. But there will always be a segment of the population that perhaps we're able to kind of stomach a little bit more risk at the time and perhaps they push their budgets that may not be able to deal with these elevated rates and will be forced to sell. So it's really going to depend on where the rates kind of move. If Canada replicates what the US has already mentioned this week, if they move into a cutting cycle where they cut rates, uh, I mean, there's already been talks of many people within the Bank of Canada. They are also concerned about some of the mortgage renewals that are on the horizon. So they may be forced to be in a position where they also have to cut to kind of stymie some of that risk. A lot of this is unknown moving into 2024. So I'm moving into 2024 with a little bit of caution. However, when we look at the... the when we look at real estate in 2024 from strictly from a strictly buying perspective, from either a first time buyer or even a move up buy, there's a lot of opportunity for people to get into the market or to upgrade in the market uh, at some price points that we haven't seen in two to three years. And I'm actually kind of willing to say, and I mean, Next month is going to be my prediction podcast, so I'll really get into some of my predictions for 2024. But I'm pretty confident that, like I said earlier in this podcast, I don't believe that we have much more downwards pressure on price in terms of like massive changes in price. Um, perhaps we see another 5% uh, on the downside, but we could also see 5% on the upside if we get into a cutting cycle. All of this is unknown, uh, and a lot of this we're going to discuss in our next podcast. So to summarize everything, I think we're still in a very interesting buying opportunity here in the city of Toronto. Mortgage rates 
are likely started either hold currently where they're currently at or more than likely start to trend downwards. Listing inventory is still trending upwards. Pricing is either going to stay flat or perhaps might have a little bit more downwards price pressure. All of this, it's starting to point pretty clearly to me that there is a buying opportunity right now. It's likely going to remain for at least the first quarter of 2024. And I think that a lot of the people out there who are waiting for that buying opportunity in Toronto, the ones who are brave and the ones who can digest some of this info, do some of their own research, they may come to the same conclusions and be able to take advantage of a slightly depressed market. And that's it for episode number 10 of the Under the Radar Real Estate Podcast. Thanks again for watching. If you liked what you watch, please hit like, subscribe, hit that notification bell for more content coming that's just like this. As mentioned a couple of times in the podcast, we have a predictions podcast coming up next month in January. Very excited for that one. Uh, we have a ton of brand new, fresh content coming in 2024. 2023 was our first year on YouTube. We had some kind of mixed success. I know there's 300 plus of you who are subscribed to the channel. Love every single one of you. Uh, we'd love if you could share our content, comment down below. Actually, comment on where you think the market is headed in 2024. If you think the market is going to shoot up in 2024, if you think there's more room to go down, any comments, we'd love them all. So to kind of wrap things up in a bow, real estate as in life, the next big thing might just be where you least expect it. 